Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we are just going to do a discussion. So there are probably going to be spoilers in this. And I know normally when a book just comes out, I've been trying to like not, you know, do full spoilers, you know, just try to review and I will review it. There will be review elements to this. Uh, but I also feel like I'm probably just going to go on a rant at the same time uh, for Absolute Carnage number five. And this is by Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. But there's also like an intro drawn by Mark Bagley, um, which was pretty cool. And John Dell, who I think uh, did the ink and colors and stuff so um yeah really really good looking book overall especially the opening it was neat to see Bagley come back and and kind of do his style but kind of it, it looked a little fresher in some ways and I'm wondering if he's going to do that on his upcoming Venom Island storyline which is starting like uh in January I think or, or maybe even end of December I can't remember but it's starting very soon right after this absolute carnage thing because this is not officially the end and that's kind of part of my a negative critique in a way but also like this i i would say this story has an ending like the point of it which was to stop carnage like in issue one there is a you know that does kind of conclude uh, and then they leave a little room left for some wrap up i guess and i guess in venom number 20 coming up we're going to get that epilogue to this uh so that we'll know kind of where everyone stands at the end of this series um and kind of maybe where and when uh, you know, we're going to get the next chapter of this after the Venom Island stuff, because I can't imagine we're going to wait too long to see what happens uh, with, you know, with the conclusion of this. So I don't want to spoil it now. And I and I have the digital code. So boom, right there before we get into spoilers and all that, uh, there's the digital code. Uh, first person to get that, obviously, will get the comic. So with all that said and all that out of the way, let's dive into this book, because uh, like I said, we're going to get into spoilers probably. Um, I am ultimately not really satisfied with this fifth issue uh and i know that's not going to surprise some of you because i some some of you are probably like oh he's a donny cates hater that's all he is and it's like no i see potential in that guy i know he's got great ideas and i've seen him execute really great stories or stories that i've at least liked um but uh this like this venom run just isn't doing it for me so yeah after i read this i was like okay I don't care how good the epilogue is. Um, this is where I jump ship. Like I am not going to buy this book monthly. I'm not going to continue to pay four dollars. I don't feel like it's worth my money, um, I, or or even the four ninety nine price points for this like event book. And then like I liked the first issue. I really dug that because I felt like okay, this is a giant size issue. There's a lot of content in here for seven ninety nine. Ryan Stegman drew the living hell out of it, and it's not that his quality of drawing dipped. He's still a top notch artist in my in my opinion. But the stuff he's given to draw um, is just not that interesting to me. It just doesn't work. And I and if you have a different opinion, that is okay. I don't dislike you. I'm not going to yell at you. I don't think you're less than me or anything like that. I think some people get this misconception that when reviewers uh, say they hate something, people take that as a personal attack when they love it. And please don't take my word. I'm just a dude who <laughs> who talks about Venom. Like I am, I am not, you know, the king all of Venom. I'm just a big fan. That's it. And uh, and that's why I do the show. I like talking about the things I like about the character and the things I don't like about the character. And this book just is, it, this series was just all over the place. Like when I think of, of an event book, I want all the main things to happen in the main book. And, you know, and, and maybe that's unfair to say, this is what I want, Donny Cates, do it. It's not so much that it's so it's more like following the rules of like not the rules i guess but the typical format of pacing things uh you know and it's always good you know you don't want to just follow the the quote-unquote rules when you're coming to story structure and everything and like i said comics should not be paced like movies they shouldn't be three act things and you know they should evolve naturally and everything but i just didn't feel like this one did at all i don't feel like like i think issue one was smart to do that format and now looking back at this, I'm wondering if maybe the format of this book should have been three giant sized issues like issue one was three seven ninety nine books, um, but don't make them monthly. Maybe just like, all right, it's bi monthly. We're going to have the first issue is going to come out seven ninety nine, all Ryan Stegman. And then we're going to have, you know, issue two come out like two months later. It'll be giant size, 60 pages again. But Ryan Stegman's only going to draw like 40 pages. Um, and then we're going to have like, you know, the middle 20 or something or a, a certain character story like Norman Osborn story drawn by Mark Bagley or something like that. You know, you, you kind of pace it that way. Um, and again, this isn't me just going like, oh, they, sh you know, do it the way I want you to do it. It's not about that. I'm just trying to look at the story we got and thinking of other ways to deliver it that I might have liked more um, or that I think would have serviced the story more and uh, and maybe also our wallets a little bit more. Um, granted, if they did three 7 issues, 
I think ultimately you might be paying more for those than, you know, one seven ninety nine and a couple five ninety nines or four ninety nines. But maybe I don't know. It's like it'll be close. But either way, the money isn't the, the, the problem. The, the, the thing was the formatting and the pacing. Um, I just felt like issue three, four and five just don't give you four ninety nine worth. Like I just that's just how I feel. Even issue two started to dip a little bit, but I was still kind of holding on like, eh, OK, the first issue set up a lot of great stuff. I'm, I'm willing to see where it goes. But three, four, and five to me got exponentially worse. Like five, maybe five is a little bit better than issue four. So maybe they did, it did kind of dip back up a little bit for me. Uh, but this issue is, it's just, I don't know. It's not a good conclusion. Anything that was set up in issue one, it's the, it's the only thing that gets paid off is the conclusion of Cletus Cassidy. And I wouldn't even say that. I mean, I, I guess that, that was kind of the setup. It was like, all right, Cletus is on a mission to gather all the codices and awake and if he gets enough of them he'll awaken no or if enough of them are all in one place he'll awaken no and so spoiler alert as we get into this but what happens the conclusion of that in issue five here is that cletus cassidy does get killed it looks like pretty much killed um by eddie brock um but by doing so uh he makes a choice and this is probably the one point in the book i really liked and why it dipped back up for me and why i liked it more than issue four is because I feel like Eddie made a real choice here that felt like a very Eddie Brock choice. Um, but at the same time, because it was kind of the, you know, it, it's the right choice and it's not the right choice. It's the gray area choice. Um, so that's why I feel like it's a very good Eddie Brock choice. So I give Donnie Cates credit there. I definitely thought the choice Eddie makes at the end to kill Carnage to save his son, but in doing so awaken Null and basically screw the planet over. Um, I thought that was a very Eddie Brock choice. He kind of made a selfish choice there. And that, to me, works for Eddie Brock. So that's what happens. He uses his new symbiote, um, that which he can hear, like, Noel talking, and he can hear all the hive and everything like that. And he uses that to create a sword to stab um, Carnage through the, the rib, or through the spine, I guess. And doing so, pulls out his original symbiote, it escapes, and with it comes the Carnage symbiote and all the other codices. And it looks like, at least, it bonds with Eddie Brock and forms around him, and, uh, and and he kind of absorbs everything. So I don't know if Eddie is just Venom anymore, or if he's Venom, the new codices that he got at the end of issue four, and all the other codices, and Carnage. It looks like he, because they show, like, you know, the Carnage symbiote going in him and in his mouth, and he can start to hear the uh, the Venom symbiote again, uh, and then they it's like, so... It's not super clear, but I feel like I'm interpreting that right. And so he kind of absorbs it all. So so I guess he's kind of like the ultimate symbiote now because he's got, you know, Carnage in him with all the codices. He's got the other codices from the new Avengers um, and, and uh, Normie. And then, uh, and then I guess he has everything else and he's got his original symbiote back. Um, it's a little left egg there, so I guess we'll find out more of that in... Uh, I hopefully in Venom number 20, but Venom number 20 will be the last issue of uh, this Donny Cates run that I buy because I just, I, I don't want to go through this anymore. I mean, for his first big event, I feel like he really dropped the ball and even more than him, I think the editors really dropped the ball on a lot of the continuity sharing and stuff. Um, this issue, like, you know, we saw at the end of Lethal Protectors that uh, Morbius and, and, uh, and Cloak and Dagger and, and Firestar and everyone, they all went inside Cloak and they're like, okay, we're going to now teleport to the final battle wherever that is and Cloak's going to get us there. Um, they also, you know, get Captain Marvel too, who released a book this week, which, you know, I'm, I might talk about that when I do the Venom number 20 episode, uh, but we'll probably do that on the live stream because I think we'll be through with season four at this point. So I, unfortunately I can't squeeze those in because that Venom number 20 book doesn't come out for another two weeks. Um, and by the way, if you hear the rain, I'm not I, like, I'm not upset that that's a background noise because it rarely rains out here in California and I love hearing it. So I'm going to keep that in this video. <laughs> um, and plus it rains in this comic book issue. Like it's most of it take this big fight in the rain. Uh, so it starts off and it has a throwback scene with Cletus Cassidy drawn by Mark Bagley in the jail cell meeting Eddie Brock for the first time. So I, I kind of like that thematically. It's okay. Okay. You're going to open with the moment Cletus and Eddie meet. And then you end the book with uh, the last time apparently that they're going to meet because Cletus Cassidy for sure looks like he's dead this time. I mean, who knows? Maybe Noel will resurrect him again later on. We'll see. Because I feel like this is, again, following that Blackest Night formula in a way to, to an extent that Donny Cates is doing here. It's like almost like, uh, you know, this is the Sinestro Corps war of his story and then he's going to do Blackest Night. And I feel like ne uh, Necron, <laughs> that's, I'm even calling him Necron, that Noel is going to be some kind of 
you know, creature that can reanimate stuff. He's already kind of, in a way, reanimated, uh, you know, through the cult and stuff. He kind of reanimated uh, Cletus Cassidy once already, so I'm sure that's maybe going to happen again. So I don't know if Carnage is dead for sure this time, but he did fall as a pair, like a, a stack of bones and, and uh, like, rotted flesh and stuff to the ground, and his head rolled off. So I'm going to guess he's dead. But all those codices are now in Venom or Eddie Brock, and so I'm curious to see where that goes on some level, but not curious enough to keep buying the book monthly. Um, I will buy this book when it comes out in trade and when it goes on sale on Comixology, because Comixology always has really great sales, uh, and they'll do like all the Donny Cate stuff and then like the Mike Costa stuff, like and past Venom stuff. They'll do Venom sales every like quarter of the year, like every couple, you know, four to six months or so sometimes, um, but or any three to six months. I, I usually see Venom sales on Comixology, and uh, and especially with the new movie coming out next year, they'll do. Carnage, Carnage and Venom sales, and I'll probably be able to find Venom Island as a full trade for like two or three ninety nine on Comicsology. And just in case I feel the way I feel now about that story, I'd rather only pay four bucks for it than pay full price. Um, even though it's Mark Bagley, he's a phenomenal artist, and I want to support the best I can. But I also want to try to read other Marvel books and other DC books now because I spent so much money on Absolute Carnage, and I feel like a lot of it was like even though I individually the issues were okay and they were fine for some of them, and the tie-ins I felt like some of them were pretty strong. But then the continuity between them doesn't work, and that's where the editors come in and where I feel like they kind of drop the ball, especially on the Miles Morales storyline uh, in in Lethal Protect they end with everyone going inside cloak and captain marvel gets recruited i guess in her book you know um so we see one panel one panel where all those heroes show up in issue five here so like they make this big thing like we're gonna go in and help the fight and okay they go in and fight some carnages i presume because they just show them show like they show miles look up and go oh man and then all the heroes show up and you're like okay cool and then you don't see anything after that of them it just goes back to eddie and, and spidey and everything and it's like all right i get it that's fine like I, you know ultimately this is a eddie and spidey team up storyline uh spider-man gets a great moment where he knocks out norman osborne um and saves uh, dylan and uh and normie and then even dylan gets a big moment where his powers kind of manifest and he's able to save himself and normie too i thought those were all neat moments but uh, ultimately when i looked at this as a finale i was like what a lackluster finale like and i'm comparing it maybe unfairly i don't know but to other past event books like that marvel has done that other companies have done and uh and when i look at and total the price i spent on all these books i factor that in too because like i said there were some weeks where i i chose comics and then i was just eating like jelly sandwich i was just making toast with jelly on it um because i'm like yeah you know what I, that's fine i'll just eat i'll eat I'll, I'll eat lower this week because I'm buying more comics because I want to keep up with all this and I want to keep the show going because the show makes me happy. Um, so yeah, when you, when you, you know, I shouldn't factor that stuff ultimately in the rating of the book, which I don't, but I do at the end of it now, I look back and go, wow, I did spend, you know, a lot of money on this series and I don't feel fulfilled. Like I, it doesn't feel like, I don't feel good for buying every single issue of this. And I know some people out there going to be like, well, no one twisted your arm, blah, blah, blah. Why are you complaining about that? And it's like, Hey, I run a Venom show and I thought it'd be fun and it was fun to try to keep up with everything and get your guys' opinion on it. Obviously, I'm just a person giving my opinion, so it doesn't matter. Like, if my opinion upsets you, you know, then you maybe you're reading too much into this um, it, because it's not important. It, it's a comic book. It's If you loved it, that's great. I want to hear why you loved it down below because this show isn't just about me, you know, crapping on things. I talk positively about a lot of stuff and I did just now give some positives that I liked in the book. I liked the Peter Parker moment. Um, I liked, uh, you know, the, the ultimately the... the climax of him you know eddie brock making a, a, the wrong choice in a way um and the right choice you know i don't even know if carnage could have killed uh you know dylan uh, we don't even know really what dylan is so who and the way he used his powers in this i'm like i don't know like i i don't know if i'd be afraid that dylan will get hurt and but then again eddie doesn't maybe know um what's going on even though he says he was connected to the hive and he could see things through the hive for some reason he couldn't see dylan using his powers. I, so I don't know, I guess they'll touch on that next issue. And that's what I felt like. I felt like Donnie Cates was writing this going, you know what, I'm going to have an epilogue issue. So we'll just wrap stuff, you know, stuff up in that too. And it's like, this should still feel like a conclusion. This should still have a wrap up to a lot of stuff. And the only thing that was wrapped up in this was Cletus Cassidy was defeated and Null was awakened before he was. Because as Eddie merged with everything, uh, that's all the codices in one place. So essentially Eddie became the beacon that awoke Null because all the codices went into him and became one, I guess. Um, 
At least that was my translation of it. And so then Null is awake, and now he's flying, I guess, towards Earth with an army of... He blew up Clintar, so Clintar, I guess, is no longer out there. There's no planet of Clintar anymore, and they're just... All the symbiotes went flying out. We have no idea what happened to them. I don't know if they went and landed on other planets, or they got they died in space, or um, or he converted them and turned them all into his, his army because he does fly with some, you know, symbiotes behind him. They all have, like, wings and stuff, and he's on the Grendel, and he's flying towards Earth, so... I mean, I don't know. And I thought Carnage was becoming the new Grendel. I thought that was the whole thing with him was he now that the Grendel was dead and burned in that fire in issue six, that Carnage. And I think even Donnie Kate said on Twitter that Carnage was becoming like the new Grendel. Um, and then he dies in this and his suits merge with Eddie. So is Eddie the Grendel? And if so, how is how is Null riding a Grendel to Earth? Like, and not that I'm trying to read too much into it, but I'm just trying to think out loud as I'm as I'm looking back on this book and reviewing it. Um, but like I said, editing wise, this book is a, a kind of a mess to me. If you look at if you just count the five issues, do you get a beginning carn like Cletus with a goal at the beginning and that see that to its end? Yes, you do. Everything else though, you don't get, or it pays off in another book, or another book says it's going to pay off in car in an absolute carnage, and it doesn't. Um, with the Miles Morales thing and stuff. And then now we have an epilogue issue that apparently is going to answer things uh, that this, I felt like this issue should have answered some of, uh, because that way it could have felt a little bit more whole. And that's where maybe, that's why I say, go back and maybe reformat these as three giant one shots that came out every other month. Um, so that way you're still on like the five or six month, you know, schedule of these books coming out with the tie-ins in the middle and stuff. Um that could have worked more and you could have filled in more story and had like when the heroes show up, you could maybe have a fun page or two of them fighting uh, or hopefully a little bit more than that of seeing Morbius and all these characters like fighting the symbiotes and, and saving people and, and showing what's at stake. Because even at the end here, I'm like, what really happened? Like, did the symbiotes completely take over New York? Because in one issue, they make it seem like that. But then in another issue, it's their kids playing in the street, playing, you know, basketball and it's broad daylight, and then the symbiotes come out of the sewers, but it doesn't look like they take over. And and then you go to Scream, and Scream makes it look like a post-apocalyptic book where symbiotes are just all over New York, just, you know, destroying everything. So the inconsistencies of every of this whole event is just, um, I know it sounds nitpicky, but like I said, I also look, when I talk about movies, you watch my, you know, uh, pre what is pre-production video for Venom 2? Like, I look at the work that goes into things as well as what's, the product that's given to me. And in this one, I feel like harder work could have been done. Uh, and that's just my opinion. And I, I don't know exactly what everyone on this book did and what they contributed. And so maybe that seems a little unfair to do. But when I look at the final product and I look at all these little things and I'm like, where was the editor on this? Where was Donnie Cates on that one? Where was the writer of this book on that one? Like, why weren't people emailing? Like, literally, we live in a world where you can text somebody and ask them, hey, what would you do in your book? Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of mine. It, does it coincide? Like, it's so easy to, to you know, converse with people. And I felt like this book made it look like, you know, very few people talk to each other. And that's weird, considering I saw similar editors' names in all of these books. So I'm like, and I get it. It's it's a big deal. Like, okay, maybe you, maybe you editors put too many tie-ins and put too, made this event too big. And if that's the case, you should have seen that writing on the wall and been like, look, we are overextending ourselves. Let's rein this in a little bit because that's what this book felt like. It felt like a lot of, you know, it, it just feels messy. Like if you look at the five issues, it feels messy and paced off to me. And then if you add in all the tie-ins, uh, those feel messy as like a coherent story. But if you just read like one or two of the tie-ins, they're they're kind of fine because you're like all right they're, they're they have beginning middles and setups for an end but then when you read lethal protectors like oh all these heroes are going to go fight carnage then you go read absolute carnage five you see them for one page if you were the person that only bought lethal protectors tie-in because of your budget or whatever or you just like those characters you're an iron fist fan or something or a luke cage fan or something or a cloak and dagger fan and you're like i want to follow just this tie-in and the main book i feel like when you get to issue five you're just going to be like what, what the heck you know like what what happened like what why did everyone show up for one page and then or panel and then nothing um that's how i felt when i read this and uh, and they, there was no reference to the pile of dead bodies so i was wrong about that because i was like oh it's kind of cliche but it seems like this is what donny kate's gonna do he's gonna he, you know he set up that pile of dead bodies in the first issue and then the hulk one shot kind of tied into that a little bit 
I thought they were going to fly up out of New York and then Eddie was going to bring him back down and they were going to land near the pile of dead bodies. And that was going to be a factor in the ending. And it was going to be this horror scene where they're fighting on, you know, and there's mounds of dead bodies around them and the news is there and they're all watching. And I just thought that was going to be the thing that was going to how the ended. So I'm like, I, I guess maybe congrats for subverting expectations. But then he just had this boring thing of them f crashing into different buildings and then they ended up back where Dylan was and they fought in front of Dylan and I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Like, I feel like you could have still had him fight in front of Dylan, but near the pile of dead bodies and that could have been a thing and you could it could have tied it back to the first issue. Um, I don't know. There's there's so many things and I'm saying, not saying that's a great idea or anything. I'm just saying I thought that's where they're going with it and I was wrong. And someone else commented saying like, I bet you they're never going to touch on that pile of dead bodies again. And uh, now I'm starting to think that. I don't know. I feel like maybe that'll be something in Venom number 20 where they, they kind of wrap that up in like a page or two or something. Because um, I don't feel like, you know, Ed, Ed Donny Cates would completely ignore that plot thread. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised because I feel like he kind of lost the mostly the focus of I mean not really the focus because the focus was to awaken Null and he did that but he kind of lost the characters and, the, and and things like that in this book and it just feels kind of messy and especially when they did animated tie-ins to it and they did all these things like it everything just it feels like a mess and uh I I can't like I I, I can't keep reading this and if he's going to build up to another event what I hope is like most readers would is they would um you know evolve maybe change do something try something better next time or do something different next time but i don't think so i think this event did really well uh sell you know sold really well i think most people out there like this book and like it for what it is and and i saw like two reviews already um of i didn't watch their whole reviews but they just a couple reviews that were speaking positively about uh you know about this issue so to me it seems like i'm in the minority here and that's fine i mean it's it's just my opinion I don't, I don't really care i like that other people like it. it it's gonna that means the venom book gets to keep going and the character gets to stay around so that great uh, i love that whatever uh but for me this is just this is my ticket out like when i read this i was like okay i spent all this money on all these tie-ins marvel you got my money you, you got you know all of i bought two or three copies of each Donny Cates issue because I got the ones in the mail, the first 12 issues I had a subscription to, and they, cause that's how excited I was for this book. So they came in the mail. So I had those copies. Then I bought, you know, my own copies here because those copies always came like two weeks late. So, um, so I would always buy physical copies here. And then a lot of them I bought digitally too, uh, just to have them because I like to give away, give away the digital codes to you guys. So sometimes I'll buy the digital one. If I, you know, if like, all right, I can't wait till, you know, um, the next day, you know, I got to, I'm going to buy Like I did this issue. I bought it digitally last night at one in the morning because I was still awake. And I was like, well, if I don't get to go to the comic store, I know I at least have five bucks I can buy you know, or four bucks I can buy this issue. So I have multiple copies of of all this and then also i bought all the tie-ins and i bought everything connected to absolute carnage and it's like there you go marvel you got my money so you can't be mad at me <laughs> for having this negative opinion i mean you may disagree with me and that's fine and you may have you know rebuttals for some of the things i pointed out in this but ultimately you know this i i, I don't care about this run anymore um you know i'm not interested in really to find out what Dylan is. He just seems like a MacGuffin. Oh, we're going to give him all this power. We're going to give him all this stuff. He's going to be exactly the answer to anything that I need, you know, kind of like the way Jeff Johns kind of used Mogo in a Green Lantern whenever there was like a big problem that a single Green Lantern, a humanoid Green Lantern couldn't handle or alien Green Lantern couldn't handle. Uh, Mogo would just show up and take care of it. And that's what I feel like Dylan's going to be. He's just going to become this thing that can solve a problem when Donny Cates doesn't know how else to, se else to solve it. What are its powers? So now he can psychically blow up symbiotes. Like, what is that? His eyes turned into like spirals. So is he connected to Null? You know, like, and if so, why would Null want him to explode a, a carnage symbiote if he's under the, you know, because um, most people who have the red spirals in their eyes, they are under the influence of Null. So how is he have the spirals and he's not an influence um i don't know i'm sure we're gonna get all those answers but i don't care enough to stick around at this point i thought dylan was just full-on eddie brock's human son and uh, and that was going to add like a new dynamic to the story but doing this whole thing um i don't know it's it's not interesting to me um at all actually and it doesn't uh, uh and the ending where they just like they end on a note where you know dylan goes you know and this is more spoilers but the the end of this issue it kind of ends on like a punchline almost where it's like you know, like in a dark humor kind of way joke where Dylan just kind of turns to Eddie and is like, so I'm your son. And then Eddie goes, and then the, the book ends and it's like absolute carnage, like, you know, almost like a grindhouse, you know, joke or something, but not really executed well, I thought. 
Um, although I did like the pacing of the final panels where it was a couple quiet panels. I'm like, hey, look, Donny Cates isn't writing dialogue. How nice. <laughs> like he, he actually took a break and let a scene breathe. And I'm like, that's nice. So I, I, I appreciate that last image for that for that reason. But ultimately, I was just like, eh. then the dialogue came in. So, um, yeah. So Dylan now knows that he's Eddie's son. And that's going to probably play out in you know issue 20. And then that'll probably feed into Venom Island. And uh, who knows what's going to happen now? Because I saw like all these like little monkeys and chimpanzees and apes and different things on different variant covers that all had symbiotes and they're all attacking heroes. I don't know if that's just for the fun of doing variant covers or if that's going to be something in the Venom Island story, but I, I'm not interested. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like I, I'm not interested enough to pay $4 an issue. I'll say that. So I'm not going to pay $20 to read the five issues of Venom Island. I'll just wait till it comes out in trade and it goes on sale on Comixology. And when it does, I'll buy it then. And then we'll do a discussion video on it in season four. But uh, I can't, I uh, can't keep spending money on something that I don't like. And so I hope even if you disagree with my opinion on this series, that you at least understand that part, you know, it's like, Hey, money's tight. And even with a second job, you know, I got to use that money to do other things with it and help pay bills and, and stuff and keep a roof over my head as rent keeps going up and stuff. So, you know, like life's tough, you know, and, and, uh, and I, I love buying comics and, and unfortunately it's something that I've cut back on. And when I bought all these absolute carnage, I stopped reading like Grant Morrison's Green Lantern and, and some Transformer issues. And there was things I, I couldn't keep up with that I actually am enjoying. And so that's why I'm like, good, I'm glad this event is over, but I'm not going to buy the Ravencroft series. Uh, even though I like Frank Thierry, I just, I need a break from the current run. And it just looks like it's going to keep piling on Scream and Venom. And they're just going to keep adding titles and spinoffs. And at a point in my life, I would have loved that. And I, deal, I still, deal, uh, still do on some level love that, they, that there's more Venom and symbiote content out there. Because obviously, ultimately, that's good for the channel. It gives me stuff to talk about. But I just don't want to pay for it uh, at full price right now because of how burned I feel on these last 19 issues of Venom and all the other stuff. And I'm not saying there weren't good issues of Venom. I like the Colin Bunn War of Realms storyline. That was good. And I even liked Donny Cates to give him some credit so I don't sound like a complete hater. I do like issues 17, 18, and 19 of Venom, the three issues that tie in that focused on Dylan. I actually do like those issues overall. I think they're paced pretty well. Um, I like the stakes. I like that the maker had a, you know, the hybrid symbiote and he was coming after Dylan. Like, I liked those things. I thought that was fun. I actually genuinely like those issues. And I think that's because Oban, uh, Oban's art is so fantastic. And I love it so much. And it has that fun flair that it really pulled me in. That's he pulled me on the Venomized and uh, what Edge of Venomverse and whatever the other series he did, like where I was like, okay, uh, the writing's okay, but I'm really got sucked in by this guy's artwork and visual style. And same way with those Venom issues. I felt, I feel like those were the strongest uh, those and a couple of the tie-ins, like I, I kind of like Lethal Protectors and I liked uh, some of the other stuff that some of these other writers did. I liked what Solid and Akma did with uh, Miles Morales. I, was, I liked it so much at the end there that I was pissed that when I picked up Absolute Carnage, you know, four and five, they didn't show Miles in control of the Carnage suit. Like I, that's how that's how much I liked it, that I got pissed uh, when I read the next issue and was like, wow, so you're just going to ignore that whole storyline thing. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, that's... That's what I mean. Like this book, it didn't feel like the left hand knew what the right hand was doing. And unfortunately, there are editors that are, are for, they're, they're, fortunately, really, there are editors that should keep the left hand and right hand knowing what each other are doing. Um, they're, they're, they're the body in between the right hand and left hand. And I felt like that body was absent uh, in, in a lot of ways in, the, in this book. And, uh, and, and the formatting and the structure of this, like where Donny Cates, you know, like basically most of the tie-ins didn't feel you know, happened during issues three, four, and five. Most of the things happened in issues one and two leading up to three. And uh, I also don't like that because as books are coming out, it's like, oh, wait, this takes place way back here before this. And yeah, so it didn't feel like things were moving organically side by side with each other. It just felt like, you know, Donnie was like, I, I'm going to be the one to to tell the end of this story. Everyone else can have the beginning. But then by doing that, you had Scream be this whole mess of like you know the apocalypse you know it's like the current symbiotes everywhere carnage is everywhere and then you go to a, a lethal protector book and they're not everywhere and then you go to like a, a a miles morales book and there's three or four of them swinging around including miles and so you're just like it it is and then and meanwhile you have you know norman osborne in four different books doing four different things and then also his own animated thing 
And at, at, at this point, I'm just like, I'm kind of, you know, it, it just didn't work for me. It, it's a, uh, if most of you out there, if you just read one or two books, you probably don't see the problems I'm having here. But if you read all of them, like I did, I feel like it just caused more problems. And I know some people out there are going to say, yeah, but you know, just enjoy each thing for what it is. That's what it's there for. And it's like, no, it's an event book. It's all ties in. It's all supposed to be coherent and one thing. So no, you know, yes, I can review them individually, which I did. And you'll see, I have positives to say about them individually, but as a whole, Absolute Carnage was a mess for me, and it's enough for me to stop spending money monthly on new Venom books by Donny Cates. So um, that's my opinion. That's what I think. You may disagree, and that's fine. No problem. Um, so let me know if you do disagree down below what you did like about the book. Like I said, I didn't completely hate the ending here. There were positives I gave. I do like it more than issue four. I thought four was just a waste of paper. Um, this felt like a waste of money, but not a waste of paper. That's how much I didn't like issue four. I was like, what's the point? You set up the Hulk fight, and then they fight for two pages. You bring the Avengers in, they don't fight at all. You, in this one, you bring all the other heroes they you, you see them for one panel show up but you don't see them do anything it's like why write an event book and have all these spin-offs and have them all tie back into you if you're really not going to do anything with it if you're just going to focus on a small eddie brock spider-man story versus carnage um with with big worldly stakes there then just write that next time don't make it a big event just write a, a six issue the, you know uh event book or four issue event book with four issues tying in from Venom number 19 and then do like one or two or three one shots that just show like Spider-Man going to get the new Avengers and you know and just just do that like just make it like editors I know you guys are like money 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 well you got my money but I I don't like that you got my money now like I, that's uh, looking back at this I'm upset that I bought all these tie-ins because looking at this series I kept hoping it would wrap up in some way and, and do really well towards the end and that Donny Cates would stick the landing but for me he didn't at all um, and uh, and for that reason I'm out so next season you won't see me review any new Venom books unless they're like Double Trouble or like they're not you know part of this storyline um, I'll only get to these. When they go on sale, when I get them at a good price, and then we'll do full spoiler discussion videos on them, but not reviews. Um, so that's where we're going from here forward. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'm sorry there's such a negative downer video of me just ranting for 30 minutes about what I didn't like about this book, but I did throw in some positives there, and I genuinely mean them, and I still think that Donny Cates is a good writer, and I see a lot of potential in him, but I just feel like, for me, this completely missed the mark. This whole event missed the mark, and I don't feel like everyone worked really their hardest. Um, I feel like some people did. I think Saladin, Frank Thierry, a lot of these people, I think they really did do their best and they delivered interesting stuff. And I give them credit for that. But as a whole, Donny Cates is supposed to be the ringleader with his editors on this, on this whole thing. They're the ones, they're the director of the film, they're the planners, they're the producers, they're the executioner, they write and you know, all this stuff and they, they plot it out. And I just feel like they did not deliver at all. And so I give this book, this final issue, maybe a two and a half out of five, um, which is more than the last issue got, which was like, a, if I could have given it a zero, I would have, but I gave it like a one um, for the artwork because Ryan Stegman's awesome, but, uh, but I can't anymore with this. So let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.